Hey guys, it's Amy here and today I bring you my March wrap up. So in March I read 11 things, let's just jump straight into it because you guys know how long these videos can get otherwise. Firstly, my first one star read of the year was A Street Cat Named Bob by James Bowen. I did a full review of this book because I really didn't enjoy it and I had a lot of thoughts on it so I will leave that linked down below or somewhere around here if you want to go and see that. I'm not going to talk about it more here because we've got more books to talk about and I don't want to give this one any more attention on my channel because I didn't like it. Skipping over two stars and straight into three stars, firstly we have The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. I did enjoy this one, I wasn't blown away by it, I don't think I'm going to continue on with this series. It follows a young girl named September who goes into fairyland and kind of goes on a little quest and things. It, it's a like middle grade kind of children's book. Very Alice in Wonderland, down the hole, through the wardrobe kind of feel to the whole thing. I think the only reason I didn't enjoy this one as much as I would have hoped is because I didn't really feel much connection to the characters and so most of the way through I just kind of felt a bit meh about it all and like I could just leave the story at any time and it wouldn't have really bothered me. I was reading it as a buddy read with my friend Tash and so we both kind of pushed ourselves to read it I guess and by the end we both had similar feelings that it was kind of an okay read but nothing spectacular. My next three star read is Hangsman by Shelley Jackson. I'm reading all of her novels this year and this is the second one that I've read so far. I have read this book before, I read it last year, I gave it two stars last year, I've bumped it up a star this year purely because I enjoyed the first three quarters of it more than I did last time. Let me tell you what this book is about. So basically it follows a young girl, it's set in America and she leaves her family to go off to college and it's very kind of simplistic in that manner but it also has a lot of kind of metaphor and deeper meaning and all this stuff to do with her own mental health and how she experiences kind of college and or university what we would call it in England um, and her relationship with the people there and, and things that she experiences. So my problem with this one is that for the first three quarters of it I understand what is going on, I get what the author is trying to do. For the last quarter something happens and this happened last time and I just don't get what is going on in the story. Like I would love it if anyone has read this book and could explain the kind of last quarter of the book. Like it hits a point and I'm just like, what is going on? Are the people she's with real? Is she making them up? Is something bigger going on that I'm just not understanding? And it's really frustrating because up until that point, I'm really in, I really enjoy the book and I really like what is happening. Um, and it just gets to this point and I'm just like, I have no idea. I don't know what is going on right now. And that's really frustrating because then it gets to the end and I just feel a bit unsatisfied with the story because I don't know what's happened. <laughs> and my final three star read for the month was When the Sky Fell Apart by Caroline Lee. This book is set during World War II on the Channel Island of Jersey. Jersey and Guernsey, which somebody informed me in one of my previous videos when I spoke about this book, were the Channel Islands that were occupied by Germany during World War II. So huge amounts of German soldiers and Nazis moved on to these islands and like terrorise the people who live there basically and this is a story surrounding that so it follows a kind of small group of people who live on this island um, there's one British doctor and he's fighting to kind of stay on the island because most British people had to be taken off. It also follows a young girl who makes friends with a German Nazi who has moved onto the island and that kind of relationship that builds there and a few other people you get the idea. There was one character and one specific storyline which I wish the author had pulled on a little bit more. There was a doctor and a LGBT storyline that surrounded him. I found that element of the story really interesting due to the fact that it was set in World War II, uh, you know, at a time where um, homosexuals and things like that were being prosecuted by the Nazis and he was there on this island uh, with all these Nazis and things and, and kind of thinking over his own sexuality and I found that really interesting and I think that should have been made kind of more prominent and it kind of got a bit, little bit lost for me. I don't know how true to fact it is but I did like seeing the kind of cultural aspects of the Channel Island life during that time. I don't know, you know, how exact it was but it was quite interesting. Moving on to my four star reads, firstly we have a comic series and that is volume three of Saga. I totally forgot that I had this comic series on my shelf and I read the first two years and years ago and so I didn't know how much I would enjoy this one. I read it, really really loved it, so I'm looking forward to picking up the next volume. So if you haven't read Saga, it's like a sci-fi comic series set around these two races of kind of 
people or creatures uh, that are at war with each other and the two main characters are in love with each other and they have a baby and they're from the opposing sides. Um, so both sides of these warring races are out to find these people and to get their baby and it's just a really fun one. I think the art style is really brilliant as well. I don't know if you can see that but the whole kind of colour scheme I really like. It's quite bright and exciting. So yes, a four star from me for that one. Next for my four star reads we have my second non-fiction read for the month which was The Racker Diaries Escape from Islamic State by Summer. This is a pseudonym. The guy's name isn't disclosed because he's currently living in a refugee camp in northern Syria. He escaped from eastern Syria and this is his story. What I loved about this book was its simplicity. It isn't a literary masterpiece. It's written in very straightforward terms to get across what is happening in Syria and how this man escaped. I think I would have been really annoyed with this book had it been really poetic or almost like romanticised what is going on in Syria because at the end of the day he is just explaining his own experiences and he is just saying it in the only way he knows how this is what happened. I'm really glad I read this one just because I knew very little of this topic and now I have read it I want to go and read more about it so if like me you're not very aware of the kind of things that are happening in Syria then I would definitely recommend this one to you. This I feel is definitely a like toe in the water for me and I'm gonna go and try and find some more things so if you have any recommendations let me know. Next for my four star reads, we have had a lot of four star reads this month, is My Name is Leon by Kit DeWall. This one follows the story of a young boy named Leon and his baby brother Jake. At the very beginning of this book they have a very tenuous and kind of troubling childhood growing up with their mother who isn't able to care for them properly. They are then taken into the kind of care system and the baby Jake is a white boy. They are born from different fathers so Leon is coloured um, and Jake is a white baby. So when these two boys are taken into care, Jake, the baby, is immediately adopted by a white couple because he is more attractive to people who are wanting to adopt, uh, especially because he's white and especially because he's a baby. Leon is nine years old at the time and just not what people are looking for, basically. We see the aftermath of Leon's brother being taken from him and how that affects him and what it kind of means for him growing up. My favourite element of this book was the friendships that Leon made with a group of people who he kind of stumbles upon who all own allotments and he goes and just starts talking to these people and they kind of allow him to help them grow plants with them and then eventually he starts like growing his own plants and it's just it was so sweet so heartwarming and just the whole story was really really wonderful the kind of things it brought up on um the care system on race and 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 all of that was just wonderful. I would really highly recommend to all. The penultimate four star read is Her Fearful Symmetry by Audrey Neffenegger. It basically follows two sisters, they're twins. They have a aunt who they've never met. She lives in England and she dies and she leaves her home to them. So they move from America. I think they're around 21 years old. Um, move from America, away from their family to live in this mysterious house in London where they've been left a very large amount of money. But there's so much that goes on in this book, it is really wonderful. The relationship between the two sisters, the relationship between the mother of them and then the aunt who has died and how that all comes together is fantastic. You also see the perspective of the people who live in the same building, so the apartment that this aunt has left for these two twins um, is in the middle of two other apartments and the man who lives on the ground floor had a relationship with this woman who died and so he has this strange like connection with these two twins and, and he wants to kind of almost look out for them but he become somewhat attracted to them and it, it's oh it's, it's brilliant and the man who lives on the top floor isn't actually able to leave his flat because he has very severe OCD and he's essentially just shut himself off from the world. His wife has left him and he is trapped in his own mind and his own flat and he doesn't leave. And these twins come along and ruffle all of that up basically and try and help where they can and try and find themselves and the relationship between these two sisters was so fantastic. So tangible and so eerie and gritty and just dark and it just gave me this feeling like almost like Audrey Neffenegger was making you, like wanting you to feel uncomfortable because there was definitely this like almost incestuous feeling between these two sisters. You know, unless you're a twin, you're never going to understand it and I loved how 
Audrey and Ifanaga made you feel other to them. Like, there was this connection between them that you're never going to understand unless you're a twin. And I thought that was brilliant. Like, it made me feel uncomfortable, which I think was the intention. The only reason I didn't give it five stars was just because of the ending. And I don't know how the ending could have been different, but I didn't like the outcome of it, basically. And, and I think I needed to love everything that had happened for it to be a five star. And I just didn't feel the ending was what I wanted to happen but to be honest I don't know what could have happened to make it any different. I'd love to know if any of you have read this and what you thought of it. My final four star read for the month is The House at the Edge of the World by Julia Rochester. I really really love this one and to be honest it's more of a 4.5 star than a 4 star. Also if you've read this one I would highly recommend this one because they have so many similar themes and so many similar feelings going on that if you loved one and you haven't read the other, I would highly recommend that you do so. Let me tell you about this one though. This one basically follows two twins. This time they are a boy and a girl. It's a family kind of drama set on the X estuary in Devon which is where I live. So we follow these twins, a boy and a girl, and their family. At the very beginning of the book, their father is out drinking with some friends. He goes to wee off the edge of a cliff, and he falls and dies. And that's the kind of beginning of this book, and it's the aftermath of that, and how the twins deal with it, how the mother deals with it, because there was kind of tension in the relationship between the mother already, and all of this happens within this house named Thornton where they all live together with the grandfather as well. So I don't really want to say more than that really because I felt that this book grew with like the momentum of reading it because most of the way through I wasn't really sure where it was going. I loved the feel of it. It had that similar kind of dark eerie feel and the same like almost incestuous and uncomfortableness between these two twins and it was just it was so gritty, I loved it. Yes, if this sounds like something you would enjoy, I would highly recommend. It has such brilliant kind of explorations of relationships and family and psychology and, and mental health and all those things. It is really, really wonderful. Moving swiftly on to my final two books for the month, and those are my five star reads. Firstly, we have Homegoing by Yar Gassi. This one was wonderful. I was dubious before I read this one because I was worried it wasn't going to live up to the hype. So many people talk about it here on booktube. I really really loved it. Before starting this book I didn't really know much more other than it was following the kind of slave trade and it had these two sisters in. When I started actually reading the book I was so pleasantly surprised by the format of it all and how the story was told because I didn't realise that this was basically what it was. Let me tell you what I'm trying to describe here. So basically we have these two sisters. It starts in the very late 1700s when the kind of British and American people are busting into Africa and starting to take people and, and kind of take them into slavery and send them off to various places. So we have these two half-sisters who never meet each other and who live very separate and different lives from each other. So one of them, she is taken and married to the white man who is running the slave trade in the area that she lives in. She leads a very, very different life to that of her half-sister who is actually captured and taken into slavery. Now I thought that this book then followed them and that was the story, you know, you followed their lives. That's not what it is at all. You then follow the generations that come after these women. So the next chapter after will be one of their sons and the next chapter after that will be the other one's daughter. And then it goes down the generation so you don't spend more than one chapter with a specific character. All the way down the generations they are mentioning the characters that you've met before but they're the grand parent or the great grandparent and it's just wonderful it's so cleverly done and I thought I've never read a book like that before and I really really loved it I've also never read a book specifically about the slave trade before I learned about it in school in history very very briefly I wouldn't have even been able to tell you what dates it happened in because it I learned about it such a long time ago the story is wonderful the writing is beautiful and I would highly recommend this to everyone. I cannot wait for it to come out in paperback. I will be buying my copy to slot up on my shelves. So yes, if you were holding back like me and you weren't too sure, and if you know you like similar books to me, then I would highly recommend this one to you. And the final book that I have to talk to you about today is The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. I read the Encyclopedia of Early Earth just a month ago, and I really enjoyed that one. 
obviously everyone's been raving about this one so I thought I'd pick it up. This one basically follows these two female characters. One of them is named Hero. She is a storyteller. The other lady is in a bit of a sticky situation because her husband has made a bet with a man and this man has basically said that he will seduce his wife. And the husband has said that if the man is successful in seducing his wife, then he can have everything he owns and he can have his wife. These two men are extremely sexist and just stupid, basically. The wife and hero overhear these conversations and so they start scheming and come up with a plan to stop the guy succeeding in seducing her. The men have agreed that the man can have a hundred nights to try and succeed and this is when hero's plan comes into play and she starts telling stories to the man and that is how the story goes so it dips in and out of various nights and she is telling these wonderful stories to keep the man busy and distracted and he doesn't even realize that all the nights have passed it's brilliantly told it has fantastic characters it's witty it represents lgbtq characters i thought it was really diverse and it basically is probably the best feminist graphic novel I have read so far this year. So yes, I would highly recommend to you all. So there we are, those are all the books that I read in March. I would love to hear if you read any of these and what you have thought of them. What did you read in March? Tell me the best books and the worst books down below. As always, I will leave links to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, everything I've mentioned today down below. Hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye! <laughs>